Wang Wang Big Boy and welcome to the Euro 2020 slash 21 prediction video ladies and gentlemen welcome to my euro 2020 slash 21 predictions today we are going to be going through all the group stage games and the round of 16 and the quarterfinals and the semi-finals and the final and we're going to be seeing who is going to be lifting that trophy at Wembley on the 11th of July. Now, before we get started, please note this is only a prediction. I'm just going off my footballing knowledge, recent results, and the squad list. Please do not have a go at me if I say your team is going to do shit. Don't cry. The time to cry is when your team actually does do shit in the Euros. And make sure to subscribe to the channel because I'll tell you now, we are going to be going on some Euro 2020 adventures. I'm not going to tell you the matches that we're going to yet, but stay tuned for the adventures. And yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. And we're going to start off with Group A. All right, Group A has got four relatively close teams in there. And we've got Italy, Wales, and Switzerland joining Turkey in that group. Now, this one was quite a close group to predict. The results are on the screen uh, on what I think they're going to be. Now, I've gone with Italy finishing first with seven points. I've gone with Wales finishing in second with five points as I think they're going to draw to Switzerland and beat Turkey. Uh, I think they'll lose to Italy, but five points should be enough to get Wales through. I've gone with Switzerland in fourth and Turkey in fifth. I do think Turkey will score, but I don't think Turkey will win at Euro 2020. That's my Group A predictions. Let's get on to Group B. All right, Group B was a little bit easier. I've gone with Belgium winning all three of their games and coming top of the group, scoring 10 and conceding none. I think the defense of Belgium is extremely strong and I just don't think they're gonna concede. We've gone with Russia in second with two wins. Uh, I think they're going to lose to Belgium, though. And Denmark in third with three points. And Finland, unfortunately, in last one. So we've got a proper group table. So that is my group B. Let's go on to group C. Now, group C. I think Holland will win this one. And I've gone with Holland actually storming this one. Nine points, eight goals, two conceded. Top of the group going through easily. Now, the second and third place were the hardest things to call. I've gone with Austria beating North Macedonia 2-0. Austria losing to Holland 2-0, and Austria tying to Ukraine 1-1. Ukraine, I've gone with them to beat North Macedonia only by a single goal. I think the pressure at North Macedonia, first time in the tournament, I think the pressure for Ukraine is going to be big. I think they're going to feel a lot of pressure at Ukraine. Which means that Austria and Ukraine are finishing on identical points with identical scored and identical conceded. Now, I've gone with Austria to go through. I've no idea why I put Austria in second due to the fact that it was three goals scored and three conceded each. But I've gone with Austria to go through. Ukraine will get through in that complex third place playoff thing. But I've gone with Austria to come second. Don't know why, but I think the Aussies, well, not the fake Aussies, are going to do it. Group D, it is England. Yes, I've gone with our boys England to get nine out of nine points. I've gone with them to beat Croatia by 2-1. They scraped a win in the Nations League. I believe Harry Kane and co. will be good enough to beat Croatia for a second time. Uh, I think England are going to trounce Scotland 3-1 at Wembley. I just think it's going to be a bit of a too much for Scotland to handle. I do think they'll score, though. I do think they could score first as well. Um, if they do score first and England don't show up, Scotland are well and truly capable of winning that match. And England's final game against the Czech Republic, 3-0, comfortable win at Wembley. I just believe the, the the fact that playing at Wembley with kind of the hosts, if you get what I mean, even though there's about six hosts, I just think England are going to be too strong. Croatia are better than Scotland. I just think they're going to go through instead of them. I think Croatia are going to beat Scotland at Hampden Park uh, by two goals to one. Uh, Scotland will come third, but they're only going to get a point, and that's going to be the tie one all to Czech Republic, and the reason why Czech Republic come in last. I just think they're going to concede a, a little bit, like, uh, concede more goals. I don't really think Czech Republic are going to do very well, but that is only a prediction. But England, to get nine points, come on, you boys. 
Group P, relatively easy. I believe Spain are going to win it, and I think Poland are going to come second. I believe they're going to get the same amount of points because I think both teams are going to draw to each other when they play. It's going. I've gone for a two-all draw. It's going to be a nice game. The whole Spanish line uh, with now Laporte Spanish. He's changed from French to Spanish against Lewandowski and Co for Poland. Um, I just think it's going to be a little bit too much for Switzerland and Slova uh, Sweden, sorry, and Slovakia to handle. I think it's just. It's got Spain and Poland written all over it, hasn't it? Let's be honest. Group F. The group of death. <laughs> this could go any way. Now, I'm going to go through these results one by one because I think it's going to be a bit interesting. Hungary, just count them out. They're coming last, okay? The other three teams are too big not to come last. Anyway, I've gone with Portugal to beat Hungary by 3-0. I've gone France and Germany to tie. Now, the only reason why France and Germany are going to tie is because it's in Munich. Germany are going to have more supporters there than France. I think it's going to be a lot for the French to handle away at Germany. I think they'll tie. France and Germany are really, really close whenever they play. I'm going to go with the draw there. Hungary versus France. I'm going to go 3-0 to France. Germany versus Portugal. Now, this was a tough one to call, but I think Portugal have got too much on Germany. I think the pressure of them going to Munich is a lot less than France going there. So, I think Portugal are going to win that one. I think Ronaldo, Bruno Fernandes, Jao Cancelo. I think Ruben Dias is going to score a header, the big man for our Blues. Uh, but <laughs> Portugal are going to win. But Germany are going to take it all out, all their anger of losing and drawing to the top two teams in the group on Hungary. I think they're going to win 4-1. Same again, they're in Munich. I think it's too much for Hungary. Portugal versus France. Now, this is the interesting one. If Portugal win, as things stand, they'd win the group. But I've gone with France to win. I've gone with France to win it. I think they'll just beat, they'll just tip Portugal. That's why I've gone with a close score, a 2-1. Which means France are going to win the group. Portugal are going to come second. Germany are going to come third. And Hungary are going to come last. Now, it could go either way. It could finish Portugal top, Germany top, or France top. I just couldn't call the group. I've gone with France, Portugal, Germany. Okay, big boy, it's time for the round of 16. And we're starting with a game at Wembley Stadium. We've gone Italy against Austria. Now, this could be Austria or Ukraine. I believe Italy are going to beat Austria or Ukraine, whichever one get through anyway. I've gone with 2-0 in this one. Italy are looking really, really good in their friendlies. They've won both of their international friendly games before the tournament. I think Italy are looking strong. So I'm going to go with them to get through into the quarterfinals. Okay, game number two is Wales versus Russia. Runner-up of Group A versus runner-up of Group B. I've gone with Wales. I've gone with Wales to win 2-1. I think Gareth Bale and I think with their performance based in Euro 2016, I think they're going to do it. I don't think Russia are that good. They're, they got the benefit of being hosts in the last tournament in the World Cup. I just think well, it's there for Wales. Really is there for Wales. I'm going to go with Wales win. I'm going to go with 2-1. Okay, knockout round number three is going to be Belgium against Switzerland. Now, the third places were really, really complex. I divided it out based on who got the most points. And I put them in groups. I'm, I'm probably all wrong with the third place playoffs. I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to lie. I don't know how they work. But I've gone with Switzerland in this bracket. But Belgium are going to win. Like, unless they play Germany, Belgium are going to beat whoever gets put in that bracket with them. Uh, Belgium Germany is going to be close. I still think Belgium will beat Germany because uh, the game's in Seville. Uh, Germany don't have that host advantage like they've had for the all three group games. I'm going to go with Belgium to win 3 1. I'm going with a KDB masterclass. PFA player of the year, KDB, by the way. Suck it, Spurs fans. Okay, this is a tasty little game in Budapest on Saturday, 27th of June. Mark your diaries for this one Holland versus Germany. The Dutch v. the Deutschland. I'm going with Germany. I'm going with Germany. I think the fact that Van Dijk's still not fit, Holland don't have that defensive capabilities. I think they'll breeze past the group because they've got an easy group, like Austria, Ukraine. They may drop points to one of those two. Uh, I've been a bit flattering on Holland in the group, but North Macedonia, they should get past. I'm going with a Germany win. Uh, I'm putting them as the third place team from D, E and F. They are the best first play, uh, third place team in that category. Uh, I think they're too strong for Holland. I think Germans... They'll get past that one. Relative, they'll make a meal of the game, but relatively easily get past Holland. I'm going with the German win. Croatia versus Poland. I'm going with the draw one all. I think it's going to go to extra time. It could go to penalties. I just can't split the two teams. But I've gone with maybe a Luka Modric masterclass. I don't know whether Rakitic is in the squad. Um, Mario Mandzukic as well. I 
Perisic. I just think Croatia got to the World Cup final. I just think they're going to be a bit stronger than Poland. I think it's very, very close on paper. I think Lewandowski will do his bit. I think he'll score in that game. But I think Croatia are going to win 2-1 in extra time. Or on penalties. Not too sure. Croatia for me. Okay, then on to the next quarter final, and it is the three Lions England versus Portugal. Now, this one is too close to call. It is honestly too close to goddamn call. Do I back our boys, the three Lions, or do I go with a Portugal win? I don't know. I'm gonna. Oh, I'm gonna have to say it. England won, Portugal two. I just think. Portugal will beat England. They're, they're better than us. I think we're getting there. We're not there yet, but we're getting there. Maybe for the 2022 World Cup, we can really, really challenge. I am not saying that England 100% are going to lose. I just think for the video that Portugal will win. So we're going to put Portugal through, but England, they can do it. I know they can do it. All right, next one, France for Ukraine. Quick, easy one. France are going to win 3 0. Next, and finally, Spain versus Denmark. Again, Spain are going to win quite convincingly. I've gone with 2-0. Could be more. Maybe Ericsson might score one for Denmark, but and it might be defensive discipline. 2-0 Spain. Next one. Let's go to the quarterfinals. Okay, first quarterfinal. Munich. Italy versus Belgium. Italians, known for defending. Belgium, not really done anything in a tournament as of yet. I think Belgium are going to win. I think Belgium are going to win 3-1. I think they're going to be too strong for Italy. I think the the defence that Italy are going to play is going to run out eventually. I think Lukaku and De Bruyne and Hazard and his brother Hazard are going to barricade that defence. Too, It's going to be too much for Italy. I've gone with the Belgian win. They're the first team to go through to the semi-finals. Okay, for my second semi-final in St. Petersburg, Russia. We are having a repeat of the 2018 Russia World Cup final. It is Croatia versus France. Now... I don't think there's going to be as many goals as the World Cup final. 4-2, it finished to France in the end. Lloris, we don't forget that mistake. I think it won't be as goal fest, but I still think it's going to be the same outcome. I still think France are going to get through. Um, only by 2-1 this time, I think it's going to be a lot closer. But do not be surprised if France score 3 or 4 or 5 that game. They've proved it in the biggest stage of the lot. France are in the semi-finals. Okay, going on to the other side for the quarterfinals, we got Wales versus Germany. Now, yes, Wales are going to get further than England, but the fact that they play Russia in the round of 16 and England play Portugal in the round of 16, I can't call England Portugal. If England get through, it'd be amazing. It could happen, but Portugal on paper and over the course of tournaments are just stronger than England, okay? You, you can't deny it, all right? Anyway, I'm an optimist. You never know. England could go through. Wales versus Germany, though, I think Germany are going to smack Wales. I think uh, it's too much for Wales. I think they've done really well to get to the quarterfinal, but I think Muller and Co. are just going to be too much for, for Wales. Uh, I'm going 3 now. And Portugal versus Spain. It could be England versus Spain. I'm going to keep England in this little loop because Portugal, England is just too close to call. It's honestly too close to call. Um, I think England or Portugal will beat Spain. I've, I've gone with Portugal to beat Spain only by 2 1. But I think Portugal are better than Spain. So Portugal are going to be in the semi-finals. And two semi-finals to be taking place both at Wembley. One on the Tuesday, one on the Wednesday. Let's start with the Tuesday game. Belgium versus France. What an absolutely mouth-watering tie that is. It, again, like England versus Portugal, it's going to be so close to call. I'm going with a French win by two goals to one. I think, again, a repeat of a World Cup semi-final. I think it will be the same sort of outcome France are going to get to the final um, yeah I don't think Belgium are there yet I think their, their defense is good but I don't think it's like world class like France is like you, for France you've got Lucas Hernandez you've got about 50 million center backs that are coming through and then you've got Pavard at the right that's probably their weakest player Ben Pavard with the belt with the Belgians like they are not as strong in the in the defense as good as as good as France are so France are moving into the final, but it's too close to call. But yeah, I'm going with France. Let's go on to the next semi final. And another mouth watering tie Germany versus Portugal. Portugal are winning that only by 1 0 because I think Portugal 
don't they don't score a lot of goals in the lead up to like the final. Look at the Euro 2016, they scraped through on penalties in the semi and they got through to the final. It was nil-nil against France and they got to extra time. So it was like they scraped extra time and they got a goal and they defended it. I'm going with Portugal. I think Portugal was a lot better than Germany. And um but I think Portugal will only score one. By the way, who's going to take penalties for Portugal? Is it going to be the GOAT of goal scoring, Cristiano Ronaldo? And then Ronaldo! Oh! What the oh! Or is it going to be Penandes? <laughs> I don't know about that one. Um, not too sure. I think Portugal are going to win just by a single goal. So they're going to go into the final to set up a mouth-watering clash. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for the Euro. 2020 slash 21 final at Wembley between France and Portugal a Euro 2016 final repeat the last time these two teams met in the Euro 2016 final the Portuguese got the better of France and not just that the French were the host nation Eder scored in the 115th minute of extra time at the Stade de France to break the French heart. They would come back though two years later and win the World Cup final, but I'm sure the French have still not recovered from losing at home in the Euro 16 final. Anyway, the score for the final is going to be France 3, Portugal 1. I think it's too much. I, and I'm going to go with a detailed prediction. I'm going to go with an Antoine Griezmann goal. I'm going to go with a Kylian Mbappe goal. And I'm also going to see a goal by one of the defenders. Maybe Ben Pavard. Maybe Rafael Varane. But it'll be through one of the defenders. I promise you that. And Portugal are going to get a penalty. And I think Bruno Fernandes is going to give it to Cristiano Ronaldo. And he's going to fire it into the back of the net. But I think it's going to be too much for Portugal. I think they've done incredibly well to get there. To beat England. To beat Spain. To beat Germany. Unfortunately, they're going to fall at the final hurdle. But unfortunately, someone has to fall at the final hurdle. As we experienced last week. Anyway, that is my predictions. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Do you think French are going to win the Euro? Do you think England are going to crash out to Portugal? Or could England replace Portugal in the final? Do you understand the concept of the third place playoffs? Let me know down below. Anyway, like, subscribe and share. See you guys for Euro 2020 adventures very soon. Peace out.